So hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're watching this on the Camfed Instagram or the Twitter or wherever you're watching from, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to be joined by Natasha and Linda and we're going to be discussing mentorship, leadership, the importance of role models all within education and what that means to us. So today is an amazing collaboration between myself and the Camfed team which is so cool and we're going to be doing this because I think our our views align and also what we care about aligns and our passions align. And if you don't know who CanFed are, you should definitely get to know them. I've been following them for years and absolutely adore what they do. They are campaigning for female education across five different African countries and Zimbabwe included, which is a great connection for me because I was born there. And obviously Natasha and Linda, you're both based in Zimbabwe. And I think that's a beautiful connection that we share. So for those of you who may not know me, my name is V Laraj Zokativu, but I go by V and I'm currently a postgraduate student at Harvard University. I just completed my undergraduate studies at Oxford. I run an empowerment platform for young people here in the UK who are about to go to university. And I just absolutely love campaigning and fighting for education rights within education for young girls across the globe. So we are going to get straight into it and we're going to start off by having Natasha and Linda introduce themselves and we just hope that you guys will get something from this and just get some inspiration, motivation to go out and help change the world. Okay, so I wanted to ask you both to introduce yourselves, what your name is and how you're a part of the Camfed Association. Natasha, you can go first. Okay. Hi, um... I am a purpose-driven young woman who is passionate about education as a tool for youth empowerment and rural development. My name is Natasha Mabuza. I was born and raised in Buhera Rural District in Zimbabwe. Um, the topic of education is a very personal one for me. I dropped out of school for two weeks when I was in Form 1 because uh, my grandmother and my family could not afford to raise the resources required for me to go to school. Um, it was then that I was selected for comfort support from Form 1 to Form 6. I remembered the proverb, opportunity knocks once on a man's door, and that pushed me to start hard and give it all I could. I joined Comfort Association in 2010, and um, in, after high school, I, got, I joined Ashesi as a Mastercard Foundation Scholar. In 2017, I graduated with a distinction in management information systems from Ashesi. Mm -hmm. Currently, I work at Masai Sai Trust School in Arare uh, as an IT officer. I oversee the organization's ICT strategy and e-learning programs. I also focus on network administration, um, end user support and data security. Um, additionally, I also run a mentorship program for rural young women to help them tackle both social and academic problems. Thank you. Wow, you're just amazing. I'm so inspired just hearing your story and your journey and we haven't even begun. So I'm very excited to hear more. And now Linda, can you tell us a little bit about you and how you got involved with CamFed and just a little bit about your story? Hey, my name is Linda Pepe. I'm a Comfort Association member. I was born and raised in Jombe, a rural area in Kwekwe, uh, in the Midlands province of Zimbabwe. I was raised by a single mother who struggled to put food on the table for us. And um, it was really difficult. I said through primary school, through selling the few extra products that you would get from our small scale subsistence farming. But when I completed uh, primary school, things really got hard. I had no hope of getting into secondary school. That's when I was identified for Comfort Support and Comfort supported me from Form 1 to Form 6. After completing high school, I got a scholarship to study computer science at Ashes University as a MasterCard Foundation Scholar. Um, through the, the support of Comfort as well on that one. And after I completed um, Ashes University, I started working at Comfort as an IT officer. Wow, why I studied computer science? I had the first contact with 
a smartphone and a computer at the age of 19. Yes, 19. <laughs> I realized how much I had missed throughout my life to that age. And um, I, I never wanted any other young woman to miss out like I did. So that's what uh, pushed me to study computer science. And now with my current role as an IT officer at Comfed, I love that role because besides the other tech, very technical duties um, in that role, I also get the chance to mentor young women to guide them, to support them in their career paths, especially those who are, who are interested in IT, computer science, or engineering courses. So I, I mentor them as they get into, as they go for tertiary education um, throughout their studies, and as they also venture into the different career paths in that field. It's been an exciting journey. Wow, I love hearing that, like how you both organically and naturally found a space like Camfed and how it's helped you. So we've spoken about how you found Camfed, but now I want to talk about how you use it and what it means to you and where you are now with it. I think we talked about this before when you told me that it feels like it's just a massive sisterhood where you're all supporting each other. So I'd love to hear what Camfed means to you now in as you're growing up women now and like what you're doing now and how you just use that um as a resource for yourselves so linda if you go first then wow um as comfort association members we are in network with over one hundred fifty thousand members across countries um and in that network we there we have lawyers entrepreneurs doctors teachers you name them, quite a number of professions. Uh, but what brings us together is that intimate understanding of the barriers to girls' education. And uh, we are unified by the same goal of making sure that every girl doesn't miss the opportunity to get education. And also us rallying communities and urging other communities to do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only do we support um, young girls out there in the marginalized areas, but we also support each other as sisters. Wow. We provide peer support for each other. We give each other the platform to, um, to be leaders within the, the society and beyond. We help each other navigate the struggles we face in life. For instance, when someone completes um, secondary school, then proceeding to tertiary education, sometimes uh, even beyond Zimbabwe, for instance, myself and Natasha were both at Ashesu University in Ghana. And us being in a, a different environment um, really made uh, us and even other um, Comfort Association sisters who were at Ashesi, we came together to support each other. I remember my very first assignment, I had no idea how to type <laughs> out that assignment using a laptop. So I had to go to Natasha because Natasha was a year ahead and uh, she had to really like teach me from... <laughs> <laughs> everything like how to type how to write like oh. basically everything but that's the power of having a comfort association member because they understand you more and they know where you come from they understand your struggle and they are always ready to support so to me comfort association is such a powerful sisterhood Wow, that's such a personal story to share and the fact that both of you were together and that she helped you, and that's really beautiful. And I like the idea of mentorship, sisterhood. It's just, I think it embodies what I think Camfed is. Obviously, I haven't gotten the chance to ever be on Camfed as an association, but watching from the outside looking in, it looks like it's something that supports you through everything every part of your life and obviously especially education so i'd love to hear from you natasha what does camfed do for you how are you using it now and just a similar question to what i asked linda i i think linda has said everything but uh, i'll just say something in brief <laughs> so to me i would describe the comfort association is a pan-african network of energetic and educated young women who we'll look at the vulnerable children in their communities and they look at them and they say you know what um i know what you're going through i have been there and i'm ready to support you 
until you realize that every cloud has a silver lining, you know? And um, one thing about us is that we, we have a background, we share a background of extreme poverty. So to us, we hate poverty with passion, and but the difference that we are ready to make a difference in our communities, yes. Wow, wow, that's just so powerful to hear. And I think it's a motto that so many of us hear every day about every cloud has a silver lining, but you guys are literally living proof of that very fact. And that is so powerful. So my next question to you guys is, what, what has education done for you in terms of opening those doors? And I think we've seen cases where young girls don't get to go to school or don't get to complete their education and we've seen what that does so i'd love to hear the the other side of it what do you think education has given you access to or how has it changed your life and why is it so important that we make sure zimbabwe girls get to go to school um we'll start with you natasha <laughs> uh, to me i would say education means exposure and awareness uh, because I believe uh, through education, you learn to care about the environment and the people around you. Through education, you become aware of yourself as a person. You know your rights, you know your skills, your strength, your weaknesses, the future that you desire for yourself and even for others. Um, I see myself as a living testimony to the power mm -hmm. of education as a tool. Uh, for, for young women's empowerment. And I think on that note, I can safely say education is the gateway to one's success and community development. Mm -hmm. I, I agree 100%. And Linda, what are your thoughts there? Well, to me, mm -hmm. education means giving someone a voice, mm -hmm. a platform, bringing out their potential and empowering them to go as far as their potential takes them. Um, a few years ago, I wouldn't have imagined myself, um, even on this platform with you, V and Natasha, I wouldn't have imagined myself doing the kind of things that I'm doing right now, the kind of support that I'm giving to others, and even the kind of um, positive change that I've brought in my community. So I think um, being educated made me realize my purpose, my strength, and the fact that the world needs me and most importantly, the fact that I have what it takes to help out someone in this world and make the world a better place for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really, really beautiful message that you're sending. It's when you educate a girl or a boy, anyone, when you educate someone, you're not just educating them, you're going to impact their community, the people around them, they can go back in and help. Like when you educate someone, you're giving them access to so much more than just a pen and a book. It's knowledge, it's exploring the world, it's exposure, it's everything that you're both saying. And I guess that leads me perfectly to the question of what do you think currently are the major obstacles to girls education in Zimbabwe and oh this one's a big question but how can we how can we start to solve them not how do we solve them because it's a big one but how can we begin to solve them so yeah what are some of those things and um, Linda wow that's that's a very interesting question and you say it it's it's a big one it's a broad one um but what I would highlight is I think changing of mindsets mm. for parents mm -hmm. for the community at large, and even the girls themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give a personal example on this one. Um, in my case, even uh, though my mom, for my mom it was difficult to put food on the table, she really believed in educating the girl child and she wouldn't com compromise on that. So she would go out of her way to make sure that in the smallest possible way that she can, she would contribute to my education and make sure that I get educated. And I think that kind of a mindset for, from a parent can push you as the child to go far, no matter how difficult and how um, hard things are in the family or in, in the society in general. And let me not forget the support from mother support groups. So a company has mother support groups uh, in different areas. And um, I happen to have one mother support group close to my school. So they would come, support me and other comfort supported clients in that um, same school they would provide even 
small things like um, to, 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 as in, incentives for us, like sweets, you know, to just make sure that we are motivated and we know that we have their full support um, to be educated. And when I say changing the mindset of the girls themselves, that one too, um, you realize that growing up as a young girl, well, this is uh, personal as well. I, I was determined, I was dedicated. I knew that no matter how hard things are, if I remain focused, one day I will get there. So that kind of mindset made me um, remain in the right lane. I wasn't um, distracted by men, you know, the, the <laughs> early marriage and all that. Um, I, I never had the spirit of giving up. I knew that one day if I remain focused, I will reach greater heights. And on that, on that note as well, so we would need role models to instill such mindsets in our young um, girls out there. And even in our parents, in our communities, to show them that, you know what, um, it's not the end of the world. The fact that you are struggling, maybe there's no money, mm -hmm. there, there's poverty and all, you can still sail through and make it in life. So I think the, there's power in um, role models, there's power in mentorship, and there's power in having a community that is supporting the girls' education, having parents or guardians, relatives that are in full support of girls' education. That will really take girls' education far. Yeah, I think I completely agree with what you're saying in terms of you can't dream of something that you haven't seen. So I think when you're saying role models and mentors, I think a lot of these girls, they having that is amazing because you can say, ah, look at Linda. She came from somewhere like I came from and she's doing this and I can do it too. So I think I completely agree with you 100% on the importance of role models, mentors. And that's why I'm so grateful for what you are both doing because you are changing other girls' lives and you don't even know how much you're impacting them. So um, yes, Natasha, what are your thoughts on the obstacles to girls' education in Zimbabwe specifically and what you think we could start to do to try and help that? Uh, so there are so many, many so many of them. <laughs> but uh, I think I'll just focus on two. Uh, the first one being poverty. Mm -hmm. I think this is the major challenge affecting uh, girls' access to, to, to education. L you know, like I shared earlier, my, my, dream was my dreams were almost shut when I was in Form 1. And today when I'm sitting here, I ask myself, had I not received support from Comfort, what would have been my fate? Mm -hmm. Because I witnessed the first hand young women like myself, they were dropping out of school to try and save their families. Uh, from, from poverty. And, you know, something that my, my grandmother said when I graduated from Ashesi in, in Ghana, she said in 2017 that you have not only graduated from Ashesi, uh, but you also graduated from poverty, from hunger, and from inequality. And, you know, that speaks volumes because I totally understand her because in your situation, she understands more than anyone else what an uphill task is it is for a girl child born and raised in one of the most remote rural districts in Zimbabwe to rise and thrive. Uh, and then um, secondly, I would say role models, like Linda said, because I think um, young women, they need more role models to, to draw their inspiration from. Uh, I will share a personal story. For me, when I was growing up, I was inspired by my uncle. Uh, he was an accountant by profession, and he was the only one with a car in the whole village. So to me, I thought the only person who can afford a car is an accountant. <laughs> so it got very interesting to the point where uh, at ordinary level, I had 10 subjects, and the only C I had was in accounting. And I, I kind of had the back and forth with my family because I said, even though I had a C in accounting and A's in other subjects, I still want to pursue accounting at A level. And they, they didn't understand why. But to me, in my mind, I was just saying, if only I become an accountant, that's when I'll be able to buy a car. So I went to A level, I did accounting, business studies and mathematics. And then I got to Ashesi and then 
I started learning about computers and now I was caught between, should I do <laughs> accounting? Should I do computer science? And then I said, okay, I'll do management information systems, which is more like a combination of both courses. Mm -hmm. And then um, right now I'm thinking, I need to focus more on empowering other young women and build personal relationship with them to help motivate them and help them uncover their potentials and even guide them through career guidance, you know, because for me, I, I was just focused on being an accountant because I was inspired by the car, but then there's more to it. You learn about your passion. What are you passionate about? Then you pursue maybe a career that is aligned to your passion. So I would say um, we need to continue mentoring young people and so that they, they have more role models to look up to and draw their inspiration and also to just keep motivating them. Especially, you know, they are even more inspired when you show that you understand what they are going through and you understand their challenges. So for me, it's easier to interact with uh, these rural young women because I have been there. So I totally understand what they are going through, their social problems, their academic problems, family problems, all that. So I'm, I'm actually running a mentorship program. And right now I'm in the process of actually registering. It's not to be as a project, but I now want it to be a, an organization. So yeah, I, I'm doing something <laughs> to, to ensure that girls' education is uh, put uh, at the forefront of economic development. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Wow, I don't know what to say. Wow, okay, that's really great. Um, I think you're completely correct once again, it's the same way that Linda was talking about the role models and the idea of education helps you access just so much more. And what you're saying about poverty is completely accurate because I think sometimes when you don't have the access to, to know what else is out there or what you can and can't do. And I think we were talking about this before when we spoke about early child marriage and the fact that some girls are not aware that they can actually go to the courts and, and report these things and, you know, appeal it. And um, I think education helps you do that. It helps young girls have empowerment, helps them know their rights, helps them access more. And um, I think that's just really, yeah, beautiful. And I, I pray that they all get access to education but it's an uphill battle but we're gonna it's one will win <laughs> um <laughs> so as you know it is currently africa youth day which is very exciting and mm -hmm. I think that's amazing so i was just wondering if there's any advice anything that you'd want to tell the youth of africa especially zimbabwe and especially girls i mean I don't know. You just tell me what you think. So what advice would you want to give to them? And what advice do you wish you knew when you were, I don't know, a bit younger, five years ago? What do you wish you knew that you didn't? Uh, Linda. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, to all you out there, I, I want to say use that skill that you have. Capitalize on the strength that you have. Um, together we can build the future that we want to see. Don't wait um, for tomorrow. Don't wait for an opportunity to rise. Yes, prepare for it, but do what you can right there with what you have. Amen. Wow. I agree. And what would you, what would you tell yourself the same thing five years ago? Or is there something that you wish you just knew then for yourself, personally to you? Yes, I, I think what I just said is also personal because at some point I thought that um, for me maybe to to excel there should be I don't know some some kind of magic or someone coming to 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 push me and oh but now nah. yes you can get support but you also have to start to uh, whatever you can with whatever you have wherever you are. If there's an opportunity that will meet you, it should meet you um, in a ready state. Because I, I can only imagine if I had gotten um, maybe the scholarship to Ashesi without the passion to do computer science, without the rightful um, maybe results to get into Ashesi, I wouldn't have gotten to Ashesi. If I had been identified for uh, support by Comfort, um, but as a young girl without a passion to to get educated right 
I wouldn't have gotten educated because opportunity comes, but we also need to have something that burns whichever opportunity comes yeah uh, you'll find you ready we have young women who want to start businesses who want to um do different things in life but what i'll say is if you can't start a multi-million dollar business then start that one dollar business that you can afford then start that whatever you can um start it now don't wait for tomorrow opportunities will only find you if you're opportunity ready so let's work hard and let's come together as youth innovate ideas uh share ideas work together to really see the future that we want to see i think i, I keep saying you guys <laughs> right but i really think it and i think what you're saying there is so accurate i always tell my students here in the uk the same thing i say success is when opportunity meets preparation so even if that door has not yet opened when it does open be as ready as you possibly can be and I think what you just said there hit the nail on the head saying yes you might be desiring this multi-million dollar business but before that let's try this one dollar like can we manage our time can we get ideas together can we innovate are you gonna work just as hard in this one dollar as you will in that multi-million and I I think that sends a powerful message. And um, Natasha, what are your thoughts? What, let's start with the advice that you want to give to the youth of Africa first, and then we'll move on to the personal one to you. So yeah, what advice would you give everyone? Um, to, to us, <laughs> I would say that um, we, we are the leaders. They used to say that we are the leaders of tomorrow, but I would say that we are the leaders so the advice that i'll give to us is that let's realize that um we have an obligation to transform africa we are the hope of africa the change is us and the time is now um and then i would say that um five years ago i used to think that our leaders as in uh, back then i used to think that leaders are the people in authority like the president and the ministers i used to think that uh, our success story as a continent depends on on the leaders like the presidents the african union and the sada but now i'm realizing that um it, it, they are actually looking up to us to transform africa because they they <laughs> They are saying we, are, we have the new energy, we have new ideas, we have new opportunities, and then we even have more platforms to connect and even inspire each other across the countries. So let's just realize that um, the, even the, the leaders that we are looking up to are actually looking up to us. Yes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I think that's really um, accurate in the sense that a lot of young people forget how powerful our voices are. And especially when we come together and we put our minds to something that we care about, whether it's the environment, education, whatever it is, we are the future. We've seen it with so many young people like Greta, you know, she starts a protest and then now the whole world is you know, discussing environmental issues in a way that they never did before. And I just think we've got to realize as young people that Yes, there's more power in our voice than, than we may think there is. So I think to round it off, I just want to know personally, because I'm nosy and I'm just intrigued, what is next for you guys? Like, What are you hoping to see for yourselves in your personal lives and things in the next year? I guess maybe Natasha, it's seeing your organization become official and for it to grow. I don't know, I'm speaking for you now, but what would you want to see in the next year for yourselves? So we'll start with you, Linda. Thank you so much, V. And um, that's a that's a very interesting question. That's a very big question. Um, well, a few years from now, I see a big tech hub in Africa, where young, great minds, innovative minds meet to create technological solutions that really suit the context of Africa. Because I think in marginalized areas. There are so many problems that we face that um, some of the solutions that are already existing might not suit um, those kind of communities and those kind of settings. So I really see um, a big hub where we have software developers, uh, we have um, 
engineers, we have any technical uh, youth coming together to build um, solutions for such communities. To, and yeah, that would be a, a good space as well to mentor young women who want to take up um, technical courses, technical career paths, uh, especially in the young, in the marginalized areas where they might not have uh, mentors who are well knowledgeable in those fields to guide them and make sure that they reach the level they want to reach. But generally, I'm advocating for youth coming together. I think there is power in unity. There is power in, in, in thinking and discussing issues together. There is power in coming together to address uh, the problems that we face as youth in um, Zimbabwe and beyond, especially in the, in the marginalized areas. Wow. Wow, I can't wait. I'm going to be waiting on the sidelines and cheerleading you on all the way. Uh, Natasha, what do you hope to see for the world, I guess, and also for yourself in the next few years? Uh, for me, um, in the next one or two years, um, like you, you, you said it for me, <laughs> I'm registering my, my, my organization. So I want it to be official and begin to be recognized even at national level and at an international level. So the idea for me is actually to expand the project because right now I'm just working in Buhera Road District, but I know it's not just Buhera, it's my home, but then there are also other districts that need the same systems and support. Mm -hmm. So for me, the, 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 that's the, the idea. But what I'm also doing beyond uh, the mentorship program, I also want to train these uh, rural young people about technology so that they, they become computer literate. Because right now, as we speak, technology runs the world. We are speaking right now, it's because of technology. So I, I, for me, I'm more passionate about education, technology, and entrepreneurship to give an entrepreneurial mindset so that when you are stuck, you don't just sit there and you say, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do, but you use the little that you have to, to, to get started and achieve whatever that you, you want to achieve. So, but the big dream for me is to build the, build the largest youth development center in Africa that connects and inspire young people to be a positive force of development in Africa through leadership, entrepreneurship, collaborative action, and community service. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. I am, I am excited for you both. Like, I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to visit your youth center. I just can't wait. This is amazing. So thank you both so much. Honestly, I hope that some people who watch this video, wherever they're watching from, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever, that they feel inspired to go out and take action in their own way. It can be as small as they want it to be. It can be as big, but as long as it's helping make a difference, I think that's what matters. And it can be through mentorship, being a role model for someone or helping anybody. Like you can do whatever you put your mind to with the right support systems around you. And I think you're both living proof of that. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. It was a beautiful conversation and I hope I'll get to meet you soon once um, Corona decides to let everyone travel. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fee. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank you, Fee.